The culture victory, I'd say, is the most complicated way to win the game in Civilization VI, so I wanted to go over some of the basics, talk about some strategies, and hopefully help you get a dominant culture. Now, I'm going to start off with some of the basics here and then gradually increase and talk about some of the more complicated things like this window. This window starts off pretty complicated and it just becomes even messier as you progress through the eras. Um, but for now, let's just ignore this and I will break it down at the end of this video. But the most obvious thing is get up as many theater squares as possible. You don't have to play tall anymore. You know, playing tall in Civ 5 for a cultural victory, it works. Now, I would say it's kind of the opposite. You want as many cities as possible so you can grant, so you can get as many theater squares as you can. So as you can see, I mean, I've got theater squares in uh, kind of three of my cities right now. It's turn 152 on quick speed, but you want to get as many of these suckers down because you want to generate as much culture as possible. Now, why is that? Why do you want to generate as much culture as possible? Because at the end of the tree, you're going to get some pretty amazing policies uh, that you can enact inside of your government to grant you, you know, tons more tourism and give you more bonus bonuses. Like social media is ideal here for a cultural victory because online communities gives 50% tourism output to civilizations to which you have a trade route with. I mean, that is kind of the end game goal is to research social media as quickly as possible, enact it in, you know, assuming you're probably your democracy. You, you don't have to choose democracy. You don't have to choose the peaceful governments. Uh, but, but late game, it would be very helpful. I, I would advise you to go democracy because you need as many economic slots as possible. Not only for social media, but also the space race grants some pretty nice bonuses, triples the tourism from great works of music. So the theater square is going to do two things here. It's going to get you down the civic tree as quick as possible, which is going to allow you, you know, to speed through everybody else and get some of these very nice uh, tourism bonuses. But also, it gives you culture and great person points. And great people points is, you know, I would say the second most fundamental thing you need for this victory type. Uh, if number one is theater squares, number two is going after great writers, great artists, and great musicians. So... You know, the theater squares are going to help out a lot, um, enacting some of those policies inside of your government that, gr that give you two extra points. So if we look at my government right now, I'm getting, I've got this policy, my wildcard slot, two plus points for great artists, and you're going to continue to get this stuff uh, throughout the game. So right now, I think, yeah, I could, I, I probably should, in this, in this example, it's not a good example, but I should be probably going after great musicians at this point, um, great writers. Both of those should be enacted. I'm not exactly sure what was going on in this situation, why I didn't decide to do that. But yeah, that's that's going to help. So making sure that, you know, you have those policies in your wildcard slots and focusing on you want to make sure that you're the one that's that's beating the rest of the world. I, I don't really want to complicate things by looking too deeply into this. You know, just make sure that you have display spaces open. So if I was nine of nine right now, I need to be concerned. I need to find another city slap down another theater square so that I can continue to have openings to display whether it's my my arts, uh, my my writer's works, or uh, or my musician, my musician's music, I guess you could say. So um, I, I don't, yeah, don't worry too much about this. Theming bonuses are kind of complicated and you just, I think for a beginning player, hope that it all works out, but don't concern yourself too much with that mechanic just yet. So to recap here, you want as many theater squares in as many cities as possible so that you can get as much culture, so you can rush down the civic tree, uh, not only to go after social media, to go after some of these other really important policies, and we're going to go over that right now, uh, but also, yes, make sure that you're generating most of the world's great writers, artists, and musicians. Now here's the other thing, this is the other reason why you want a lot of culture, is wonders. Wonders are important because wonders are going to offer you the adjacency bonuses for those theater squares. And there's also a lot of wonders that go hand in hand for a cultural victory. So I advise looking through this, uh, looking through this civic tree before you begin your game, and, and take note of some of the wonders that you want to rush. Um, even if it's not a wonder that maybe gives you automatic tourism or extra slots for great people or culture, there's another wonder in here which could be in the tech tree. I'm not entirely sure, but there's a wonder in here that grants you an extra wild card slot in your government throughout the game. And, and we just went over how important that can be. So if I had another wildcard slot throughout the entire game, getting another, you know, policy that helps me generate musicians or artists or writers a little bit faster is going to be tremendously helpful. Now, the final thing I want to talk about before I break down the late game culture victory overview screen is antiquity sites and shipwrecks. 
So in the Renaissance era, you're going to get the option of, well, first of all, you're going to go down humanism. And this is the third building you can build inside of your theater squares. Assuming that you have theater squares in most of your cities in your empire, this is a pretty big deal because you need to choose wisely whether you build an archaeological, archaeological, I can't even say this word, so don't mind me, a museum or an art museum. So if you decide to go with the art museum, you will not have a slot open for the possible antiquity sites and shipwrecks you might find in your map. Uh, by the way, you won't be able to see these guys until you go after natural history. So I would just, I would just say, be very careful. In the very, in the very beginning, I'd say maybe just go after the art museum so that you know you can continue to to get more great writer points per turn and great artist point per turns, and then you also get extra slots for art as well. But you gotta kind of get a good mixture of both because the writers and the artists and the musicians will eventually go away, especially in the late game. They're they're gone. And I'll show you right now that they're gone. So just choose wisely. And, and I'd say don't go all in for the art museums. That's not a good idea because there might be a lot of antiquity sites and shipwrecks nearby. So I want to talk about this window because it is quite overwhelming. And it doesn't make much sense, I don't think, in the description. So if you use the Civ 5, basically what they're trying to say is your culture per turn is your defense and your tourism output is your offense. If you have a lot of tourism, if you have more tourism output than other civs have culture per turn, then you're going to win the game. You're going to win the cultural victory. Um, if that doesn't make any sense, don't even worry about it. What I want everyone to focus on are these tooltips here above in this column, above these numbers, because this is how you're really going to want to focus late game. At this point, you know, there's not much we can do to get more tourism overall. Like I've ran out of great musicians, artists, and writers to recruit. And I've already pretty much gone after all the sites that I can as well. The archaeological sites and uh, antiquity sites, I should say, and shipwrecks. So let's talk about each one of these modifiers. Negative 50% for the Enlightenment. So I didn't talk about this because it, it's it's going to be difficult. And if this, is, if this is your first time going for a cultural victory, I wouldn't worry too much about this. But it is possible to achieve a really early game cultural victory. Um, and that's why they put this modifier in here. After everyone discovers the Enlightenment, you get this negative 50% penalty to tourism from other civs. So you got to keep that in mind. I would say not. don't worry about it too much, but um, we're going to see that modifier in every single one of these tooltips. So I did go down social media. I rushed, I, I raced down the, the civic tree, and uh, I have a pretty awesome government. So we're going to see this uh, tourism bonus plus 75% for every trade route for almost all these tooltips, and I'll kind of show off my government late game here. As you can see, like, all of my economic policies have something to do with tourism. And and that's very crucial. That's why it's it's really important that you do go democracy late game. You know, you don't really need to worry about it too much. You can choose whatever you want for the first tier of governments, the second tier of governments. But, yeah, I mean, at some point you need to go and be democratic. I'm not saying that you can't go maybe communism or fascism first and then later switch to democracy. You can do that. Because it might be easier to achieve a cultural victory if there's a Civ that has a lot of culture output and he's kind of worrying you. Maybe go fascism, take him out from the game, and then change to a democracy and you don't have to worry about, you know, generating too much tourism from him. So basically, if you were to add up all these numbers, that is giving me this value here. And then 156 is showing me how much I need to achieve the cultural victory. So I'll go over a few more of the tooltips that we'll see. Um, I haven't discussed this yet, but a religion is really, really important. You're going to get some major bonuses, or you're going to get some major penalties in this case, if you have different religions. So we're getting a negative 50% because of because this civ has all already discovered the Enlightenment civic, as well as negative 50% because of a different religion. That's that's too bad. There's not much you can do about different governments. I would say not. Don't worry about that. I mean, hope that everyone chooses a democracy uh, in the late game, but it's it's not as likely. Luckily, this is not a huge penalty, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Finally, the last positive modifier that is important to take note of are open borders. So at a certain point, yeah, it would be good for you to be friendly with most civs so that you can accept open borders between each other. You can go the route of just destroying a bunch of civs. That is totally possible, destroying a bunch of civs and only having a handful left so you can so you can win your cultural victory. But um, you want to at least be able to get open borders with everybody. 
because 50% is is a really big I mean in this instance we're getting 75% because of the trade route and 25% because of the open borders I mean that there you go that's, that's a net of 100% uh, which really makes up for the penalties that we're seeing late game. I think overall the most important thing fundamentally for this victory type is just to generate as much culture as you can, get out as many theater squares as possible, that way you get down the civic tree, that way you get more tours and policies to enact in your government, and you should be, you should be just fine. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.